Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, the beef producer's place to explore new management practices. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the community. Hey folks, it is Shay here and welcome back or welcome to the show. Today we are going to be talking about ag lending with Mark Sand. So Mark is going to be talking about what you need to do as a rancher to show up prepared for your meeting with your ag lender, as well as how to just communicate and build that strong relationship with an ag lender because they are an important part of your ranch team more than likely. So with that, let's visit with Mark. We know that buying bulls isn't all about the numbers, but there's an app out there that makes it easier for you to sort through the data and spend more time looking at the bulls. Bullpen is a free app that makes it easier for cattlemen to find bulls that meet their criteria. Whether bulls are selling by private treaty or auction, you can search for EPD ranges, location, or specific breeders. You can even see the sale details, get directions, connect with the breeder, and get a link to the video catalog, all from the app. You can save bull profiles beforehand, or in just a few seconds, you can pull up their profile in the pen on sale day. This is developed by Nebraska Rancher. Bullpen is available from Apple or Google Play. It requires no user account, has no in-app purchases, no ads, and respects privacy. Go to getpen.com to get the app or get more information. All right, Mark. Well, it's nice to do an in-person interview today, and we're going to be talking about ag lending and kind of building that strong relationship, which is important more than ever now, I guess, in my mind. But um, with that, before we kind of dive into the topic more, Can you give the listeners a little bit of a background about what you're doing today in the ag lending space, but also your background in agriculture, because I know that's where your roots are. Yep. Uh, My name is Mark Sand. uh, I'm the location president here in Steele, North Dakota. I've been at the bank here for 16 years. Before that, I taught school for a few years, 20 years actually, and then I, I was raised on a farm in Mackville, North Dakota, and we had approximately 75 to 80 black Angus cows, and we had about 1,200 acres of cropland. So I have a farming background. I also farmed for four years from 1993 to 97, and I had some cows, and I had uh, farmed about 1,000 acres then too. And now I work with the farmers and ranchers, and I really enjoy working with them. It's my background, it's how I was raised, brought up, and uh, and I'm kind of a coach now, like I used to coach when I was in basketball, or I was a coach at the school for years, and I coached them, and now I'm kind of coaching my ranchers and farmers alike, and that's that's how I get started here, so. Well, absolutely, and something I talk about a lot on the show with different industry experts and ranchers is about building that team, because ranchers can't do everything by themselves, and the having a good relationship with the banker is something that we usually put on there as well. A good relationship with your banker is very important. I meet with every one of my customers, you know, typically it's during operating season. So that would be January to March, April. But when they come in, then we update our balance sheet. We do our cash flow. They typically bring in their taxes and we see what the year was like. And, uh, that's how we get started every year. Hopefully every year is a good year, but it's not because when you're farming or ranching, and right now we're talking more ranching, the cattle industry right now is good, but the last few years you've been getting paid for all the work you've done because the cattle prices weren't so good or the calf prices weren't so good. But now that's changing some. But now we got more money invested into everything because prices are going up, land rent will go up, and so on. But um, So that's kind of what I do every spring to get uh, every rancher and farmer I have started. So So we're going to dive more into what a strong relationship looks like later. But sometimes I like to ask kind of a more heavy hitting question first. And so I guess your perspective, if you like had a magic wand and can change any one thing about how people work with their bankers, what would that be? To me, the most important thing is communication. You gotta, we gotta communicate both ways. But if you're coming in, we're borrowing money. You gotta be honest at what happened at the farm that year, you know, what the capital purchases you made that year, and we just gotta figure everything out. You gotta communicate. The toughest conversations I have is when people don't communicate well. Um, they're not. They don't. Putting it lightly, they just, they're not organized at what they do, okay? They come in, they got loan payments, and then they get laid on loan payments or something like that. Your good customers communicate that. They make their payments. If they don't make their payment, they're going to call you and let you know what's happening. But 
You have to communicate with them, and I have to communicate with them. So. Absolutely. So when we talk about communication and having a good relationship with your banker, is that you said that's number one. Very important. What else goes into having a, building that solid relationship with your loan officer, banker, whatever you want to call them? Uh, what else goes into that? Well, well, that's an interesting question. I thought I answered it just now, but maybe not. Well, is there um, more than communication when you think about it? I think of all my ranchers I work with here, and what else besides communication? Well, they got, you know, a rancher is a very diversified per person. You know, right now on the ranch, you gotta you gotta be a businessman. You have to be because mm -hmm. you gotta take care of all your costs. You gotta be a mechanic because you gotta fix stuff out there on the farm. If you can't, it's going to cost you so much because labor and parts and all that are so expensive. Um, you got to, there's a, just a few things you got to do on the farm. You got to be a really good businessman right nowadays. A ranch is so hard to start without having uh, dad and mom to help you get started now because it costs so much to get everything started. If you had to go out and try to buy land and machinery and your cattle and stuff, that's, it's too hard to do. You got to have a start probably for mom and dad to get started in the cattle industry. And that's typically what I see around here in our area too. So you brought up earlier when you're meeting with your customers, you have them come in and bring their taxes in. What else, so that you can see how things went on mm -hmm. the farmer ranch that year, does it only need to be taxes that they're bringing in or does it need to be like the managerial set of finance records too? No, you have to bring in, you know, what we get off your taxes is typically what I use it for is your, um, what your expenses were from the year before. Because I'll use that in your cash flow pretty much. Use the same numbers unless you have more cattle or you've got more land that you're farming or something like that. But what else do we do? I'll give you a balance sheet before you come in and you're going to look at that and just update the balance sheet. What are my current assets or what do I have for calves to sell or what do I have for new equipment that I put on there we update that balance sheet to see where you're at there see if it improved from last year or went down from last year and typically if you get your operating note paid every year then your balance sheet typically is going up if you don't get your operating note paid in some of your term payments then our balance sheet typically goes down but that's important yeah so how I'm curious how many of your customers have a true business plan when you meet with them and have true direction with where they're going. I mean, goals, kind of a strategic vision. Very few. Very few. But come. some. Yeah, but some. The good ones, when they come in, they, they have a plan, what they're going to do now and what they plan on for the next few years, too, what they're going to try and do. And most of my, some of my ranchers, they're, they're really good workers. They're hard workers, but they're not as good of a businessman. They're not good bookkeepers, okay? And they don't take care of those financial decisions probably like they should, but they're not quite as organized in, in the financial part, which is important, the financial part. So what I'm hearing is communication and organization. That's in any job you do, just like yours, Shay. It is. You, you know, it every is. day you've got to be organized. I have a checklist of what I do at the work, and... And the farmer, they get up in the morning, or the rancher, when they get up in the morning, you know, every day, there's something they got to do on the farm. Because I can remember my dad always saying on the farm, there's always something to do on the farm. It might be fixing fence, it might be checking the cows and giving shots, you know. And, but there's always something to do. And, and you, you got to work. But typically, your ranchers are some of the, they work hard. Every, my ranchers work hard. They get up in the morning, and they work morning till night all the time. And cattle, you got to be around them all year round, too. You know, you got to be there, not like uh, just if you have crops, then you can be, you know, there you have your spring and your fall mostly, you know, when you're combining and heart and springs work. But cattle people, they're around all the time and they got to have, take care of all the weather conditions. Something you can never control in any farming or ranching operations is the weather. Look at last winter, we had 100 inches of snow and now you got a lot more expenses you got to take care of because there was. Well, the extra fuel, the extra repairs on all of my tractors and stuff like that from pushing snow and stuff like that. But and bedding and feed. Feed. I was just getting to that. Yeah. Yeah. Those. Yeah, that is the nice part about the markets now. But like you said, there's a yeah. lot of with higher input costs and everything. There's a lot to make up for from last year too. Oh, oh yeah. And again, farmer, ranchers, farmers. I say I'm in the same boat, but they 
every year is so much different for them. Maybe it's a dry year, and then maybe you'll have to go buy hay or something. And it's something you can't plan for every year what happens on the farm, you know. Mother Nature controls a lot of what you do on the ranch because maybe you have a good hay crop, maybe you don't have a good hay crop. Maybe you have to buy hay, you know. We had snow last year. And then it comes calving time. Hopefully I get good weather during calving time because now I want to save every calf I possibly can because mm -hmm. they're going to be worth. Right now, cattle market is all-time highs, and we needed that for our cattle people. I can tell you that right now. That was very, very important. I had a good time. So, so how are you seeing your most successful customers financially prepare for those unforeseen expenses, those unforeseen weather events, so that way Good question. they're not yep. always, I don't want to say skimming by, but do you yep. kind of get where I'm going yep. with this? Yes, I definitely know what you, you have to have some, on, typically on every ranch or farm we have now, their income is more diversified. Somebody is typically working off the farm or there's other income coming in just other than the cattle or the crops. And those are the ones that typically um, can weather the storm of a bad year. You know, if you just have cattle and you don't have a lot of numbers of them, then it can be hard, and just like on the crops if you don't have enough out there. But you have to have some other income coming in to help support your um, farming ranching operation. Hey folks, if you want to start your own podcast, I will be the first to support you. Podcasts are an amazing method of building up your personal brand, increasing sales for your business, and applying your passion, all while sharing conversations and ideas that matter. With millions of podcasts that are out there today, I want yours to belong to the 50% that are successful, and more importantly, I want you to enjoy what you do. Check my show notes for a link to my website with free resources and different opportunities to help you get started on the right foot. So I kind of want to switch the conversation and talk a little bit about that younger generation mm -hmm. that's maybe just entering or they're in their first five years. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see them make? My inexperienced ranchers or my young ranchers compared to my experienced ranchers. My experienced ranchers have been through so many good times and bad times. And they typically don't go buy all the expensive equipment, okay? And nowadays equipment is so expensive and the younger generation is more, I need this, I'm gonna go buy it. I need a new baler, it costs 60,000, you know? And you have to budget for every expense you have. You can't afford all these um, expensive pieces of equipment and stuff like that. They need to, they gotta go through some tough times too and I think that's important in any job you do and then you work through figure out okay what did I do here and I gotta improve on it for the next time if I did something wrong you know but typically the younger generation believes they have to have more pieces of equipment expensive pieces of equipment and they're not quite as conservative as my experienced ranchers so how are you seeing the more inexperienced ranchers start rising to the top though in some ways like what are the good inexperienced, your good inexperienced clients doing outside of being a little more conservative with equipment? Um, they use, typically they have a good start. They get some help from mom and dad to get started and that helps a lot. They know their genetics on their herd. They know their animals good. Um, they get some help so they don't have to buy all their equipment right away. And they get just a good start getting going. It's hard, like I said earlier in the podcast, about how hard it is just to get started on your own without having to buy everything at one time. But, and again, they're a businessman. A rancher is a businessman. They have to be, you know. So. so I was told one time by someone else who I had visited about finances and ranching on the show, and they said if you have a land note, a cattle note, and an operating note, you're in it's pretty risky, or you shouldn't have all three. Oh. What's your take on that? I have a lot of mine that have a land note, an operating note, and term note. A lot of my customers do, a lot. Of my ranchers, yeah, yeah. How do you successfully navigate that? Because that's, that's a lot. You gotta look at what each term payment is, and each term payment goes into our cash flow every year, and we'll see how that, you know, when it comes out. I got so many calves to sell every year. This was my expenses, these are my term payments. You got to spend less than what you make. Simple as that. But it isn't always so easy. But so yeah. there's a lot of talk about interest rates right now. Yep. 
and input costs haven't gone down, even though cattle prices are great. What can cattle producers be doing to navigate these high interest rates? Interest rates are high now, and again, now you're going to see land rent's going to go up because mm -hmm. cattle prices have gone up, and again, our expenses will definitely go up, and with the cattle prices going up now, that's going to really help, but sooner or later, I'll guarantee you these cattle prices are going to go down. Will our rent and stuff go down then? Probably not, but we're going to have to plan, and again, you're a businessman. You're figuring out, okay, I'm paying cash rent on this pasture is $40 an acre, okay? What else am I paying here? When all these expenses I got, my fuel, my insurance, my interest on my loans are going to be more. you got a budget for every one of them on there. And a good financial person, a good rancher, and they'll know their finances pretty good. Is there more higher inputs? Yes, there is. Right now they are high. And land prices right now are high. That's, you know, it's, a, it's tough. It is tough getting started. So you've talked about being a good businessman a lot. Yeah. What resources can ranchers do if, like you said, ranchers are good workers, oh, a lot workers. of them. Yeah, they they know how to work. So maybe if they're not the best businessman or woman, what are maybe some steps they can take to make sure that they are still organized on the financial front? Okay. One thing, come in and visit with me. And again, we'll, if they're having questions a lot more, we can work through some of that stuff here. And also they can, I have a couple of my ranchers that, you know, they have their bills paid and they have somebody help them with all that. And mm -hmm. so they don't take care of all their paying their bills and all that stuff. It does cost money, but that does help there. Um, other than that, what can you do? Maybe listen to some of your podcasts, too, that help out. You've got to get some people. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and don't be afraid to, you know, go to financial people that can help you out. And I, in my job here I do, I talk to different financial people, too, and it might be on the stock market. It might be on, you know, you mm -hmm. selling calves. Is this a good price? Can I sell them at this price, or should I price protect them or something like that? You need to learn a little about that, too. And is there people to help you in that area? Yeah, there is. There's a lot going on in a, in a rancher's mind all the time, too. Because you gotta, should I price protect my calves this year? It's the most people I've ever had price protect their calves this year, you know? Typically, most of my ranchers don't, but this year they did, so. If you can lock in a profit, you know what you got, then you can go from there. So, what is your biggest concern for cattle producers in the next five years? That's a good question. What's my biggest concern? My biggest concern right now would be our cattle prices are high. We don't go buy so many things right now. Hopefully we can build some cash so we have some cash on hand because guess what's going to happen in due time? Those prices are going to come down. They will. It's just like in our cropland. The prices have been up on corn and soybeans and now they're coming down some. The cattle market is up. Plan ahead. They are going to go down in due time and save some cash. Put some cash away if you can. The older experienced people, it's a lot easier for them. The younger people, now I need I need a tractor. I need that rake now. I need to increase my herd. i got to go buy 30 heifers. You buy a heifer now, it's $3,000 a heifer, That's you know? Lot. Yeah. So. So do you have anything else you want to add to the conversation? Um, I really enjoy what I'm doing working with my <laughs> farmers and ranchers I'll tell you that every day they are some of the most hard-working people and good people to work with I enjoy what I do you know and I hope everything works out for them and most people it does work out for them I would say just about the majority of them it does but All I right. have a good job yeah well Thank you for being on the show today. No, thank you very much, Jay. Thank you. Yeah. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.